Welcome to another video. Let's do some multiple choice mathematical problems. So you have two options. Guess what the answer is and take a chance. You have a 30% chance of getting the answer right. Or just figure out what you're supposed to do and what the answer should be. I got this in an email from one of the subscribers and I thought it was an interesting question. We should do it. So we have a function that takes real values and maps them to real values and all the values that are output values are greater than zero. That's the meaning of this. So these are all the outputs. So if you plug in zero, you're going to get a real value f of zero and f of zero is greater than zero. So it's a positive value. And if you arrange f of zero, f of one, f of two, f of three, blah, 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 you go like that. What happens is you, you're getting a geometric progression. So it's a geometric progression or what you call a geometric sequence. I think progression is some British term. That's how I learned it. <laughs> it's, it's here we talk about sequences. There we talk a lot about progression, the same thing. Now, so this is gonna be a geometric sequence with a common ratio of one fifth. We're supposed to show that this integral lies in one of these intervals. We just need to know which one. When you get a question like this, your brain should start thinking of Riemann sums because they're giving you the actual values. So, a Riemann sum is what you should be thinking. Let's get into the video. Now, just to get a good picture of what we're doing. You see, these are all discrete points, but the function is continuous. And what you have is that you're supposed to take an integral that covers everything. You see, this one is skipping. So when you think of the Riemann sum, what you're thinking of, you're thinking of a function that is, oh, the common um, ratio is less than one, which means the function is going down. The further you go away from zero, the smaller the value becomes, as you can see. So you take the first term, you divide it by five, the next one you divide by five, divide by five, so things are getting smaller. So we can have a graph that looks like this, something like this. So you have your graph. May not be as smooth as this, but this is what I'm thinking. It's a geometric progression. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the very first term, f of zero, is gonna be here. And then you're gonna have f of one, then f of two, then f of three, like that. So let's assume we cut this this way. Oh, that's f of one, f of two, f of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I think. So, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, we got ten lines, but how many rectangles do we appear to have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, we got ten rectangles also. What exactly are we trying to do here? We're trying to find this integral. How would you find this integral? It's just the area under the curve. Just treat it that way, okay? Save yourself some time, treat it that way. Now, whenever you have for an increasing or a decreasing function, as long as it's not a constant, if you do a left Riemann sum or a right Riemann sum, you're going to have an overestimate or an underestimate, right? So when you do an underestimate, which means you're taking the smaller heights, well, the smaller heights are on the right. So the right, the right Riemann sum will be your underestimation. Your left Riemann sum will be your overestimation. Right? Now, but this is something I want to tell you. If you take the underestimation, the worst you can get is a number that's greater than zero, right? 
I'm just trying to show you that this is a good candidate because whatever area you calculate, whatever sum you compute, will be greater than zero. So, as far as the left-hand side is concerned, we are not worried about the left-hand side because this will be greater than zero, whatever area you get. The same thing here, the left-hand side is good, the left-hand side is good. The problem actually is the right-hand side. How far can we go if we overestimate? And that's all you need to focus on. The overestimate is the focus. So, I'm going to try to overestimate this by taking the left Riemann sum. Remember, it's a left Riemann sum as an overestimation because it is a decreasing function. How do I know it's decreasing? The common ratio of the terms in the output is less than 1. So I'm going to say left Riemann sum. Um, Riemann is like that. What would it be? It's going to be each rectangle will have this height. So this first height is f of 0. The second height is f of 1. But f of 1, if you use the geometric ratio, is going to be 1 fifth of f of 0. That's f of 1. F of 1 is 1 fifth of F of 0. Maybe I should write it on this side. F of 1 equals 1 fifth of F of 0. Now F of 2 is 1 fifth of F of 1, which would be 1 fifth of 1 fifth of F of 1. So what you notice is by the time you do your Riemann sum, all of them will have F of 0. So it's going to be F of 0 times the very first one will be this rectangle will have a width of one that's what we've done for the Riemann sum it's going to be one plus the next one is going to be you factor out one fifth is going to be one over five plus one over five times one over five one over five squared plus you keep going until you get to remember you have one 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You already took out 1, so you're going to have 9 of them left that will have this 5 thing. So you keep going until you get to 1 over 5 raised to power. This is 9. Now what we have here is the sum of a geometric sequence or what you call a geometric progression. So just use the formula to find this sum and see if how many times it multiplies f. That's all. That's all you need to do. Um, just to save space, I'm going to write the formula here. That's it. So the number of terms in this sequence is 10. So that's going to be our n. So we the sum of the 10 terms is going to be the first term, which is 1 multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 5 raised to power 10 divided by 1 minus 1 over 5. Okay, now we got to do the math. <laughs> you know, there's this trick. We can actually write this 1 over 5 raised to power 10 as, let's write it as 1 minus 1 over 5 raised to power 10 you see, this is 1 minus 1 over 5 is actually 4 over 5. So I can write this as 4 over 5, which is the same thing as 5 over 4, right? So I can multiply this by 5 over 4. Nice. One more. You see, 1 minus 1 over 5 raised to power 10 can be written as 5 raised to power 10 minus 1 over 5 raised to power 10. But this is going to cancel one of this, and then there's going to be a 4. And you just do the math. What you're going to see is this becomes 5 raised to power 10 minus... Okay, let's write it here. This is... So this integral here, the integral from 0 to 10 of f of x dx is approximately equal to f of 0 multiplied by this sum 
let's clean it up here. It's gonna be this sum now is gonna be five raised to power 10 minus one over, this will take out one of these, so it's gonna be five raised to power nine. Let's write nine this way so we can see it multiplied by four. Now, you do not need a calculator for this. Let's assume we ignore this one. If you divide five raised to power 10 by five raised to power nine, you're gonna get just five. Now, five divided by four is one point something. So because this number is significantly bigger than this, your approximate value is one point something, 1.25, the most 1.26, or even less, 1.24 because you're subtracting. So the most you can get here for the overestimate is a number that is just slightly greater than f of zero because you're multiplying by one point something. So this is approximately one point to, let's just say 1.25 f of zero. That's the overestimate. You see, that's why I said we shouldn't bother about the other ones, because now we know that when we overestimate, the biggest value we can get is slightly above this. So it doesn't even get to this point. The number we're getting is a number between zero and two. You see, since zero is less than 1.25, and 1.25 is less than two, then we can say the interval where our answer is must be option A, and that's the only correct answer, okay? So since we say option A is the correct choice, and that's it. So this is our answer. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.